Hi, welcome to Maya Rigging. So the first thing we want to do is make sure our menu set is set to rigging. And let's click on the rigging shelf. We can get some of our items quickly from the shelf. So before we get into rigging, I just want to explain how the hierarchies work. Maya operates on a hierarchy system, which is basically just a child-parent relationship. I'm going to go to polygons for a few minutes. I'm going to create a couple of objects and demonstrate how the child-parent relationship works. So first I'll just create a few objects. All right, I'm gonna change my layout. There's some layout presets over here on the side, but I wanna to go to panels, layouts, and we're gonna do two panes side by side. Spacebar and right click, and we'll change this to perspective. And I'll change this panel to, we'll change this to hypergraph. So you can see here I've created two spheres and two boxes. Now we can have one object drive the rest of the objects. So if I select the sphere first and then shift select the other objects, and I hold down control and press G, you can see that it groups them all together and it creates a new node on top and all the other objects I created are underneath. So this group would be the parent and the rest of the objects would be the child. Now if I just un undo that for a minute, now if I want my sphere to be the driving force for this series of objects, I can middle mouse button drag my cube underneath the sphere and you can see how it connects it underneath and then I can do the same thing, middle mouse drag the next sphere underneath the cube and then the same thing, middle mouse drag it to this sphere. And now, instead of being grouped together, they're all linked together in a chain. So we can rotate this, and you can see now that the, the sphere, being the parent, drives the rest of the, the objects. Now if I select the cube, I can select it in the hypergraph, or I can select it right in the perspective window. It'll control everything from the cube down, and so on and so forth. So it basically just filters down. D is the hotkey for changing the, the pivot point, and you can move that. And if I do the same thing here, hold D down and move the pivot point to the end. Normally I would snap that to be a little more precise, but now I can create something that's similar to what an arm would be. That's basically how the hierarchy system works, the child-parent relationship. All right, so let's just delete all that. Now let's go back to the rigging shelf and I'm going to create some bones. So we can go to skeleton, create joints, or we can get it right here on the shelf. So if I click on that, you can see that it puts our tool in the toolbar. And if I go to my side view, and let's just stamp out some joints. The first joint you stamp out will be the parent, and then every joint you stamp out after that will go down in a hierarchy system. This is called a joint chain. And a joint chain like this would be something similar that we would use for a foot. So this would be a leg with a foot. And you can see that the first joint we stamped out is at the very top, and every other joint after that controls everything underneath it. So if I rotate this, you can see it, it takes the whole leg with it. And then this would be the knee. So that's how a joint chain works. Let's go back to perspective view. The two most common ways to control joint chains are FK and IK. So moving joints in this way is considered FK, that stands for forward kinematics. If you want to move joints in IK, we have to create an IK spline handle. If you go under skeleton, under create IK handle, you can see we activated our IK handle tool. You can also get to it right here in the shelf. So once it's activated, we can click on, if we click on the hip or the top of the leg, and we click on the heel, we get an IK handle. And you can see we get a new IK handle node and we get an effector which connects the IK handle to the joint chain. And we can select it here and you can see now when we move it, it controls the entire joint chain. And this is referred to as IK or inverse kinematics. So IK and FK, those are the two main ways that we move joints to control our character. So go ahead and experiment with that for a few minutes and then we're going to dive right into rigging our character by constructing a, a skeleton for our character using the joint tool and then I'll show you some shortcuts to speed things up. Alright, so we don't need this file. This is just for demonstration. I'm just going to close this up and we're going to open up our character file. So you can use the model that we provide or if you took the modeling class and lighting and texturing classes, you can use the model that you created. When you're creating a character, the order that you want to do it in is modeling first, then lighting and texturing, and then rigging. 
In a production studio, texturing and lighting and rigging are often done simultaneously. All right, so the first thing we need to do before we start rigging is to detach the head from the body. Because you can see right now, it's the entire geometry is one piece. We want to turn the hair off and turn off the eyes. We'll hit spacebar to get our marking menu up and we'll go to right view. When you detach the head, a good place to do it is along the clothing line or if a character has a shirt on or something like that, it's good to do it underneath where we don't see the scene. In this case, this character is wearing a super suit, so we're going to do it right along the clothing line here. Okay, so you want to go to component mode. So either click this button up here or you can hit F8 on your keyboard and that'll bring us into component mode and the mesh will turn blue. And we want to select this edge loop here. So we're going to go to our lasso tool and we'll just select that edge loop. We're going to get some of the other edges that we don't want. But I'll just shift, hold shift down and deselect those. So I'm just going to hold shift down and get our marking menu up and right click. We'll choose perspective. Now a good way to check your selections is to go into wireframe mode. So we'll hit four on the keyboard and you can see it becomes kind of obvious. You can kind of see it highlighted. And you can see we have that whole edge loop there. Now you just want to make sure, you want to make dang sure that you don't get any more edges than you than that edge loop because we're going to detach the head from the body and you don't want to have any problems with uh, any other detached faces anywhere else. We'll tap 6 to go back to texture mode and we have to go to edit mesh and we'll choose detach. All right, so now it's actually detached and to check it we'll just select one of these edges and you can pull it up and see that it actually is indeed detached from the, from the body. So we'll just control Z to put that back. So now the next step is to select the faces of the head. So we're going to right click and choose face. And let's go back into side view. And we'll use our lasso tool again. So I'm just going to go right around the entire head. So we select all the faces, zoom in and take a look at it. We'll go to wireframe, press 4 on the keyboard for wireframe. And again, it's very important to make absolute certain that you haven't selected any other faces. Let's go back to our marking menu, spacebar, right click, perspective view. Check it in wireframe mode. So the next step is to go to mesh, once you have the faces selected, and just select separate. And now you can see in our graph editor here, this is our original node for the geometry. And now we have a new poly surface for the head and a new poly surface for the body. And then it gives us a transform node here too. Let's name that head geo and we'll name this body geo. The pivot for the head geometry is way down at the bottom, so I'm just going to go to modify and center pivot. All right, so now that we have the head separated, we're going to duplicate the head by using control D on the keyboard, and then we can move it by hitting W on the keyboard. All right, so we're going to keep this duplicate. I'm just going to move it way out in space over here. We're just going to put it way out of the way down here for now. We're going to use that to do uh, some of the facial rigging later on for blend shapes. Now we need to recombine the original head with the body. So it has to be all one piece before we bind the skin and start painting weights. It's very important that you select the head first and then we select the body second. Well, let's open up our modeling toolkit for a minute. Just click this button here and we're going to choose combine. Now the model is combined, but we still have to merge the vertices. So if we go to vertex and I choose one of these vertices, you can see that it's still detached. Okay, so I'm just going to select one of the vertices and I'm going to hit F on the keyboard for a minute and I'll go inside the head. So we're going to drag a box. Actually, I'll just hit 4 on my keyboard to get to wireframe mode. There's actually two vertices there. So I'll select a box over those, and we're going to go to our modeling menu set, and I'll go to Edit Mesh and choose Merge. Now, if I click on one of these vertices, it's together. You can see that the other one isn't. So we're going to drag a box over these two, and just go to Mesh and Merge, Edit Mesh and Merge. And I'll just go around to each one and do that until we get all the way around the neck. You can hit G on the keyboard to repeat the last command. Drag a box over the next one and tap G. All right, so now I've gone all the way around that edge loop, merged all the vertices together around that area of the neck, and now you can see that our model is all one piece now. So the first thing we need to do for rigging is set up our bone structure for our character so that we can bind the skin to his bones, and that's how we're going to get this character to move. All right, so let's set up our layout. You can see we have some layout presets on the side here under our toolbar, but let's go to panels. We'll go to layouts and let's go three panes split left. We'll keep this as our perspective and we'll change this to our outliner. Most professionals use the outliner because everything's laid out 
vertically and it's just easier to see things this way but when you're first starting out I like to use the hypergraph so we've got a hypergraph panel hypergraph hierarchy it's just a little easier to see all the hierarchies you can see all the child and parent nodes this way but they ju it's just displayed in two different ways when you're first starting out, I think it's easier to see it visually in the hypergraph, so you can actually see everything expanded in the outliner. It's basically connected the same way. Everything's connected the same way, but you just can't see all the children. You'd have to hit these plus signs to, to expand it, and then you can see them this way. So I'm just going to keep both up just so you can see the benefit of using both. All right, so just a quick run through what's in this file. We have our body geometry. We have two groups for the eyes. The eyes are built with the eyeball, the iris, and a pupil. Then we have our hair geometry. This is a group for the teeth, which is currently turned off. You can right click and go show or hide, but right now we just have it hidden. We're going to complete the modeling for the teeth when we rig the face so that we can open the mouth. Then we can more accurately rig the teeth and make sure that they fit inside his mouth properly. So the teeth are the last thing that we really finish in modeling. We, we block them in, but we don't, uh, we don't finesse them and refine the teeth until we're able to start rigging the face. And then we have two nodes here for a low poly character, which are hidden. This is a texture reference node. You, you just want to keep that hidden. You don't want to touch that or delete it. And then we have a character lighting rig, which consists of this nerves cube. And we have some lights parent constrained to it. We, have, we also have a ground plane in this file. I'm just going to turn them off here. We can leave the hair and eyes on for now. But I just wanted to let you know what's in this file. All right, so let's start creating our bones. So we're gonna do this a lot during rigging. We're gonna use spacebar, right click, and this allows us to go from perspective, left view, top view, back view, all of our orthographic views. So when we start creating our bones, we wanna do that in the right view, but you wanna stamp your bones out in one of the side views so that the bones remain straight in the X axis. We can go to skeleton and create joints, or we can just get to it quickly here on the rigging shelf Create joints is right here as well. So I'm just gonna click on that and you can see the tool is activated in our toolbar here. So before we start stamping out bones, let's go to shading. We'll turn on our X-ray just to bring our polygon into X-ray mode so we can see through the character. We're gonna start with the hip and you can see as soon as you click, you'll get joint one here. And then we'll create another bone for the knee, one for the ankle, one for the ball of the foot, and then one for the toe. You wanna to go past the foot a little bit here. And then we can enter that. And here we have our whole leg chain. We're just gonna click on this button here. And now we can't select polygons by accident. Yeah. Say we didn't place these where exactly where we want them and I wanna move these. We can hold D down on the keyboard and move individual joints this way. Cause you can see that if I try to move this joint, it moves everything from the knee down. But if I hold D down, we can move the joint individually without moving anything underneath it. So I'm going to undo that. So that's going to come in handy as we're building our skeleton. So I want to make sure that these are level. One's not above the other. Turn on my snap to grid up at the top here. And I'm just going to snap this bone to the grid. I'm going to make sure that this one's also snapped to the grid so that these two joints are exactly the same height. So we'll turn off our snap to grid now and I'm just going to bring that joint back up. So it's at the ball of the foot. And again, the toe, you want that toe joint to be just a little bit past the toe. Now I want to replace this ankle joint, so I'm going to hold down D and I'll just bring it up a little bit and just make sure it's right in the middle. So I want to move this joint holding down D to make sure it's right in the middle. If we hit spacebar and right click, let's go back to perspective. Now you can see that the leg went right down the center. Let's go to the front view. You always want to move the joints this way in, in the orthographic views. I'm just going to move the joint over. Now our model was built with the legs bowed out a little bit. What you don't want to do is you never want to move a joint chain this way because our orientations are going to be thrown off and joint orientation is very important. So we're actually just going to go ahead and let his hip joint be off, off the model a little bit, but it won't matter because when we, when we bind the skin, it'll have a far enough reach where it'll grab onto this geometry. So we'll space bar to get to our marking menu again. Let's just have a look at it in the perspective view for a minute. So I talked about joint orientation. So if you go to component mode for a minute, we can click on this button here to get to component mode, or we can hit F8 on our keyboard. And if I select this question mark here, we can see our joint orientations, and you can see that they're all different. Uh, the hip is different than the knee. 
We don't want to have that happen. We're going to use a different technique in a few minutes just to make sure that these orientations are correct. So we'll just go back to object mode. We can press F8 or click this button here. All right, so I'll continue showing you how to build a skeleton, but we're going to use an automated approach in a few minutes. But there might be times when you need to build your own skeleton. I'm just going to quickly go over how to do that. So go back to our marking menu, spacebar, and right click, and we'll go back to front view for a moment. Now I want to make sure this hip joint is right up at the top of his hip here. So I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. If we don't press D and we move this hip, it'll take the whole joint chain with it. If I hold D down, I can move just that one particular joint. I want to make sure it's right up at the hip there because that's where I want him to bend. Okay, so now that we have our leg joint in place, instead of creating a whole other leg joint from scratch, we want to go to Skeleton and we're going to select Mirror Joints. Now if you go to the option box, you want to make sure it's on YZ. And we'll hit apply. It'll create the other leg joint in the exact place that it needs to be. So we'll go back to the front view and we need to create a root joint right in the middle and this will be a pelvis joint. So we'll go back to our joint tool and I want to make sure it's right in the middle so I'm going to turn my snap to grid on and we'll snap it right to the center and turn our snap to grid off. We can just move that up a little bit. And then we want to parent our hip joints to the root joint. So we'll select the hip joint first and then the root joint and hit P on your keyboard to parent it. Then we'll select the other hip joint and shift select the root joint and hit P on your keyboard. Let's go back to perspective view for a minute. And then we want to make sure we move that hip joint back into place so we can go to the right view. We can hit D on the keyboard, hold D down and move it into place. And then from here we want to create our spine joints. We'll activate our joint tool again. We're going to go one, two, three. Then we can just move the spine joints into the center of the body. Then you want to select the lower spine joint and the root joint. P on the keyboard to parent them. So you want to be able to select that root joint and have it select the entire skeleton. And hold D down to move these joints into place a little bit better. So we, just so we have a lower, a mid, and a top spine joint. And then from there we'll go to front view and you'd want to add in some clavicle joints. And then I'm going to snap to grid and you want to have a shoulder joint. I'm just going to use my snap to grid so that the joint chain is straight and then I'll move them into place after. You'll want to place a joint in the middle of the forearm so that you can get a forearm twist later on. We'll turn our snap to grid off and then using D to move them around. Okay, so I'll go back to our perspective view for a minute. We need to move that into place. So we can go to the top view. Hit F on your keyboard to focus if you need to, and we'll just move that in to the arm. So now you want to parent the clavicle to the upper spine joint. You select the clavicle first, and then the upper spine and P on the keyboard to parent them. And then you would continue on with the fingers. From here, we can select the clavicle joint and go to skeleton and mirror joints. And then we get the other arm mirrored to the other side. We would certainly create the hand joints first before we mirror. All right, so I'm just going to delete all this. So that's generally the workflow to create a bone structure for your character and some of the tools and functions that, uh, that you could use. New in Maya 2016, we have some human IK controls. So we're going to click on that. Over on the right side of your interface here, you can see that we have create skeleton and create control rig. We're going to make our own rig, but we're going to start with a base skeleton. So we we'll just click on that. You can see it creates a skeleton for us. There's a little node in the center here we can select and change the size. I'm just going to scale that right down just so it roughly fits our character. We'll go into the side view and this is just going to get us most of the way there. We're still going to have to make adjustments so that it fits our character properly. So we're going to use those move tools that I mentioned earlier, I'm holding D down on the keyboard to get things in the right place in the side view and then we'll look, go in the front view and just move things around a little bit there. So let's just drag a box over so we get both knee joints. We'll press D on the keyboard We'll drag a box over these joints so we get both right and left. Move the angles into place. And then I'm going to get the ball of the foot in the right spot. And it didn't create a toe for us, so we're going to create a toe joint. With both these joints selected, I'm going to turn on snap to grid. And I'm going to snap them right to the bottom, just temporarily. And then I'll create a new joint by going to our joint tool here. And I'm going to snap that one to the grid as well. Now we'll turn snap to grid off. I just want to make sure that both these joints are on the same plane. Now I'm going to drag a box over both these joints and this one joint and we'll just bring them up a little bit. And I want to make sure that the toe joint 
is just a little bit little bit past the uh, the actual geometry. So let's take a look in our perspective view. All right, so let's hold V down on the keyboard. I'm going to snap that joint right to the ball joint, and then we'll bring it straight out. So let's select the toe joint first. Then we'll select the ball joint and hit P on the keyboard to parent it. Now that we've used this automatic skeleton generator in Maya, I'm just gonna go back to component mode for a minute. And I just wanna hit, we're gonna hit that question mark. And now you can see that the joints are all oriented properly. We can see that the Z axis is pointing straight forward. Now we don't have to go through the process of orienting all of our joints. We're gonna rebuild one half of the skeleton. And just make sure that all the joints are in the right spot. And then we're gonna mirror the other half to the other side. So let's just delete the joint chain from the shoulder on the right side. And then we'll delete everything from the hip joint down on the right side as well. I want to move that hip up just a little bit. So I'm going to hit D, and just move it up a little. Something like that should be fine. Press D again. And I think that leg will be just fine the way it is. So with the hip joint selected, the entire leg chain selected, we can go over to skeleton and let's just select mirror joints. So you can see this is a lot quicker than building it from scratch. All right, so I'm just gonna head over to the perspective view for a minute. I'm just gonna take a look around. The whole arm chain needs to come forward. So let's just bring that forward. So let's just select the elbow and bring it back. Make sure that's in the right spot. And then we'll bring the wrist joint forward. I'm gonna shift select all the finger root joints and we'll just move those forward. Just get them lined up in the top view and then we'll work on them further. All right, so I'm gonna double click on my move tool and let's set this to object and just make sure that the joints are in the right spot for our model. In the top of the view panel here, there's a little button here you can toggle between x-ray mode and shaded mode. So it's a great idea to have the joints come just a little bit past the actual geometry just to make sure that it gets the very tips. All right, so this is looking pretty good. We've modified the whole arm and the hand joints to fit inside our, our geometry. I want to include a forearm twist. So I need a new joint in the middle here. So what we can do is go to skeleton and we can go to insert joints. So we'll click on that. I'm just going to click in the center here and it, it brings it to the shoulder. Let's activate our move tool and we'll hit D on the keyboard to move that one individual joint and we'll just drag it to the center. Note that I'm switching between object and component depending on how I want to move each joint. If I'm in component here it's actually going to move the joint according to its orientation but if we switch this to world it moves it to the world orientation as you can see in our our compass here in the bottom left hand corner. All right so let's just have a look in the front view for a sec. So just making small adjustments now this here is a clavicle joint. I don't want this to be near the shoulder, so I'm just going to slide this away. And this is actually the shoulder joint, so we're just going to bring that over inside the shoulder. All right, let's go back to the side view. We'll just slide this whole part of the joint chain up. And this is going to be the base of the neck. So we'll bring that right up here. So we have our base of the neck here, and then we want this joint to be at the top of the neck, the base of the skull, basically. So this is the joint that we'll use to rotate the head around. And we're going to need another joint here. So we're going to go to the joint tool. And let's just create a joint at the top of the head. Just so that when we paint the weights on this character, we'll have an, an extra joint to make sure that the top of his head is, is solid. Go back to our selection tool and we'll shift select the top of the neck and hit P. Parent that. So this is the top of his spine. This is basically where his sternum should be. 
So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to move that individually. Let's just bring that up to where his sternum should be around here. And then I want to center this one. So we'll just bring it up approximately right about there, right about the middle of his torso. I'm just going to bring the lower back up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to create two more joints for his jaw area so we can get his mouth to open later on. So we'll go back to our joint tool. We already have it here in our toolbar. And I'm just going to create one here at his jaw and one coming right out the, the front of his chin. So this will basically give us his open closed mouth. And then we'll parent that to his the head control joint. I may want to add in an extra joint for the center of the neck. When his neck bends, I don't want it to bend too straight. So I'm going to actually insert a joint right in the middle here. So we'll go to skeleton, insert joints, and we'll put one right in there. And it goes to the bottom. So let's go to our move tool and we'll hit D on the keyboard. And let's just move that up. I'm just sort of fine tuning this so that it bends properly later on. All right, so I think we're good to go here. Let's select the clavicle and we'll mirror that joint to the other side. So we'll go to skeleton, mirror joints, and we already did the leg earlier. So now our skeleton is pretty much complete. I just want to double check and make sure it's okay on this side. And it should be exactly the same as it is on the other side. All right, so if we look in our hypergraph here, we can see we have all the joints. This whole structure is our joint hierarchy. Let's look in the outliner. So it's the same thing. We have our, at the very top, this one's called Transform 5. And this one's called Transform 5, but we can rename that. We'll just call it Master because it moves the entire joint chain. If we hit the little plus button, it'll unfold it. If we hold shift and select it, it'll unfold the entire thing. Basically the same thing as we see here in the hypergraph. All right, so this one's called character hips. We just wanna make sure the names are all correct. I'm gonna rename these to bind because this is gonna be the skeleton that's gonna be bound to the skin. I'm just gonna name this bind hips. We'll name this bind upper leg. I'm just gonna put the prefix bind on all the joints because we're going to create an IKFK switch for the arm, which is going to have a different naming convention. That's actually our knee, so it's just named left leg, so I'm going to change that to bind left knee. This one says left foot, well, I want to change that to left ankle. Left football. And then we have the toe there, and we created that ourselves, so we're just going to name it bind left toe. So I'm actually going to call this one root. Give everything a name that makes sense, but just give it the prefix of bind. So bind lower spine, call it bind mid spine, and bind upper spine. We'll call that one base neck, mid neck. This one we can call bind head, because that's gonna control the head. Bind top head, bind jaw, bind chin, and then we'll do the arms, left clavicle, and then left shoulder, bind left elbow. We'll name this one forearm twist, left wrist, then these ones are all named okay, left pinky one, two, and three, and four. It's also important that they say they have the prefix of bind, each one of these joints. All right, so we have all of our joints renamed with a prefix of bind. That's gonna be important when we build the IKFK arm. And when we start painting weights, we're gonna to wanna to know which hand is which, which joint is which, and which side. So it's important that it has the bind prefix and that it says right or left, depending on which side it's on. So that's it, we have our skeleton in place. Next thing we're gonna do is bind the skeleton to the skin and start testing it and painting weights. Okay, so now that our bone structure is in, we'll do a smooth bind on the skin. So I'm just gonna to toggle x-ray mode here for a minute. We'll select the root joint, so we have the entire skeleton selected. And then we'll select the skin. And then under rigging, head on over to the skin menu set. And we'll go to bind skin, but let's go into the option box for a minute. We want to bind to joint hierarchy. Bind method, closest distance is fine. And max influences, let's set that to two. And drop off rate, let's increase that up to six. I just find that these settings get me as close to what I need as possible. So we'll hit bind skin. So now we're gonna just go through and bend each joint and test it. Make sure that it's bending in the right spot, first of all, and that it's deforming in a nice way. Now they aren't going to deform in a very nice way at first because we have to still go through and paint weights. Skin binding isn't a perfect uh, process. We're just going to bend the knee here. You'll see it kind of looks like a bent straw. So we will have to go in in here and paint weights just to get these two sides to touch. At least it's bending in the right spot. That'll give us a nice uh, base to go on. So I'm going to just check the 
the ankle joint. See, that may be an odd place for the ankle joint to bend, but let's just take a look. So I actually might want to move that joint down just a tiny bit. You can see how it's bending in a weird spot. And this is why we do this testing. So let's check out the hip. Now don't worry about all these areas collapsing and other areas sticking out. We're going to paint those out later. That's the next step. Right now I'm really focused on just making sure that it's bending in the right spot. I think it's bending in the right spot there. That looks pretty good. So this is the shoulder joint. Now I feel like that shoulder joint's out a little too far, so I'm actually going to move that in a little bit. Let's test the elbows. My main concern is that it actually bends right where the elbow is modeled. And that's actually a good spot. And now you can see how that's going to help twist our arm. And I just want to make sure this is also another important part to test. And that's a little awkward. I think that joint's going to have to come closer to the hand a little bit. So it's a good idea to write these down. You might want to just jot down some notes. So we're going to smoothen all this out later when we paint weights. All right, so let's check the neck. Again, don't worry about all these collapsing and protruding areas. That's what painting weights is for. And this joint at the base of the neck is going to control the head movement. Looks like it's bending in a good spot there. And you can see now why we create this bone at the top. It just gives us a dispersion of weights throughout the top of the head, just so the entire head goes with that jo this joint that we're rotating. And then the jaw joint is gonna be for the mouth movement. It's not gonna look very good now. Uh, it's actually gonna be this bone that drives the jaw movement. Right now, it's not gonna look very good. Half his face is probably gonna come with it. Yep. But we're gonna paint weights so that only his the bottom part of his face opens up. Right now what I'm looking at is to see where it rotates from, that the joint is in the right spot. I can see that's rotating from his jaw and that's, that should look good once we're done painting weights. Let's detach the joints now. We're going to make our changes. It's always good to go through that process. You can see that there's a couple of joints that we do need to move. So we'll just select the root joint first and then the body and we'll go back to skin and we'll choose unbind skin and let's look at the option box for a minute. Keep delete history on, remove joint colors. Okay, detach. So I'm just gonna make sure that's all detached properly. Yep. All right, so let's make the changes that, that I noticed that need to be made. So we'll select those joints and hit D. We'll bring those down a little. And the next one was the shoulder joints needed to come in toward the body a little bit more. Now I wanna make sure it's the exact same on both sides. I'm gonna blow away this shoulder. We're just gonna delete that entire joint chain I'll make the changes to this side and then mirror it again. All right, and the other change that needed to be made was the wrist. It needed to be closer to the hand. So I'll just select that wrist joint, just bring it closer to the, the hand. And it only needed to be a tiny bit. That should be just fine. We'll just run through and test the fingers really quickly here. Again, I'm just checking to see if it's bending at the correct spot. I know it's gonna collapse like that right now. But what's most important is that the joint is in the right location. We can use our up and down arrow keys to uh, move our selection up and down the joint chain. And now we're going to select our joint again and we're going to mirror it to the other side. So we'll select it from the clavicle over, we'll go to skeleton and mirror joints. All right, so the last thing that we want to do before we start weighting the skin is make sure that any of the new joints that we created or moved, we want to freeze the transformations on the rotate values. Another way to see the joints through the body is to turn on x-ray joints. That might be a little bit easier to see the joints. We can't freeze transformations on the translate values here, but we want to make sure we at least freeze transformations on the rotate values. So I'm just going to go through each one of these joints and select them. Go to modify freeze transformations, go to the option box. We want to make sure that rotate is checked and lock normals is at never. So we can just keep this window up for now and we'll hit apply. So you can see on the rotate Z we have a minus five value here. We'll just hit apply and now it's set to zero. The reason why we're doing this is because when we go to paint weights, we're going to be bending these joints and leaving them bent while we paint weights just to make sure we get the creases nice. And we want to be able to rotate them back to their default position. 
So if we set these to zero, we'll know that we can always we can always set these values to zero on each joint after we finish bending them and painting the weights on it. Then we can just set these to zero and the joint will snap back to its its default position. So I'm just gonna go through and make sure that I hit apply on each one of these joints. Then I'll just do a quick check on these other joints. Once you've checked every joint and set all the rotation uh, values back to zero by hitting apply on the freeze transform options, we'll just close that up and now we can bind the skeleton to the skin. Okay, so now we should be good to go. We'll bind that again. So selecting the root first and then the body and we'll go to skin, bind skin. I just want to make sure my settings are still at where I set them before, two and six, the bind skin. I'm going to test the joints that I fixed from the last bind. That's bending at a better spot. We'll test it at the top. It looks fine. The shoulder. Yep, I think that's fine. And I wanted to check the ankle. Yeah, that's much better. See how that's creasing at a more natural area there? That's much better, yes. Okay, looks a lot more natural. All right, so we'll keep this bind. We'll just leave them bound like that. So let's bind the hair to the skeleton as well. There's no need for the hair to be bound to the entire skeleton, so we're just gonna bind it to the neck joint. So we'll select the neck joint and the hair, or I should say the head joint and the hair. We'll bind that as well. So to skin, bind skin. So now when we move the head around, the hair is gonna come with it. You may notice if you turn the eyes on that the eyes aren't coming with the model yet, but it will. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna attach the eyes in a different way. So let's select our head bone and we'll select one of the eye groups. We'll shift select the left eye group and we're gonna parent constrain these. So under the rigging menu set, let's go to constrain and we'll choose parent. And as soon as we do that, you'll notice this new parent constraint node underneath the left eye group. Now let's do the right eye. We'll select the head control joint again and we'll shift select the right eye group and do the same thing, parent constraint. And now when we select this joint, We'll just toggle out of x-ray mode and we rotate it around. The eyes come with the head. So if we ever need to get rid of those parent constraints to take the eyes off, maybe do it a different way, we can just delete these parent constraint nodes. Now all the joints are rotating in the right spot. Now it's time to do some weight painting.